guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I am so glad to have you back checking out what Alex and I are up to. So in today's video, yep, we're taking you to see what was out and about when we hit those three states. Yes, we hit three different states in one day looking for sale. So, which sounds like a terribly long trip, but we kind of live in, we call it the armpit of Michigan where we can travel a half hour here to Indiana, half hour there to Ohio. So it's really very doable in one day. So anyway, in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you what we saw out there, what we brought home as a haul. And then for me, I'll be sharing with you what items I found and what I'm going to be making over for you all in the process of how I get those items ready to resale. Now, a little bit different is Alex is going solo. So Alex is going to do his first YouTube appearance and he's going to share his haul with you, maybe a little bit of the shopping, what we saw, and probably maybe a little bit of the comps because he is a reseller on eBay. Really needs help because he's trying to come up with a YouTube channel name, which is not always the easiest thing. So if you could pop over there, subscribe to his channel, watch his video, give him an idea shout out of what you think his channel name should should be. So I'm going to go ahead and share with you my haul. So I was pretty excited. It's fun. You never know. It's like thrifting, like going to the thrift stores. You just never know what you're going to find. You don't really know what you're looking for, per se. So yeah, let's get into the haul. Our first sale, I've ran across this primitive little light with some greenery. It needs a little bit of help. And unfortunately, what I didn't know for the $1.50 is when I got it in the car, I didn't examine very well that it had been smashed, but that is something Chris can rewire. So very lucky there that he can fix that up, put a new plug on it. So that should be good to go. I'll probably give this a little bit more age, make it look a little bit more primitive than it is. And, you know, just spruce it up just a little bit because the greenery, I don't know, we'll, we'll see how it goes, but I'll definitely spruce this one up. Same sale, I got the star one. Now you can see the greenery is not surviving. I love the starlight, I love the light. I, you know, I'm a primitive girl at heart too. So yeah, so we'll just um, see what how I can make this one a little bit better. Same sale, I got this wooden bowl for $3. Um, it's in good shape, I think. I don't know. I mean, I have to clean it up yet because they're always kind of dirty. Um, it looks like it was a Walmart piece. Um, I think it's in good shape. I mean, I could spend the time sanding it down and making it look, look more of a natural and we'll see if I do that or not. Then we stopped at another sale and for a dollar, I got this cutting board. Now this cutting board has been used. It needs to be sanded. It is probably raw right from the manufacturer. I love that it has feet on it. So I will sand it. I'll sand it smooth because it's definitely got a lot of texture on it along with giving it a drink of some butcher block oil. So it'll, um, it'll definitely feel a lot better. And for a dollar, I run across this cute little riser. Now I can't take the feet off very well without destroying the piece. So I will just leave the little feety as is. I love the wood color. And like I said, everything's always dirty. Um, do y'all clean your stuff before you put it out on a garage sale? Cause I, I, maybe that's my, yeah, that's just my little, I don't know. I have some issues there, but I'm good. I don't mind buying dirty stuff and washing, washing it off. For another sale, I picked up these $2. And then this, so I'm hoping that we can find a piece of wood. I even think it looks, do all four. I think people would like four more than they'd like three and then put them all together on a piece of wood. So this one was two, this one was a dollar. Looks, I got this little Ikea enamelware white. Um, Yeah, I remember on my thrift with me too, well, my shop with me to Ikea that I left empty handed, <laughs> I noticed these little white pictures and passed them because you know we like to thrift at a good price right y'all so i was happy for a dollar to find this and then something that with alex buying sometimes you know he pays i pay it all works out in the end and 
so we didn't have to pay, um, find a quarter. I ended up, I'm like, hey, can I have this wreath for a quarter? So uh, yeah, these always come in handy some, somewhere. At another sale, look at this fish. Oh my gosh, I just thought, he's gorgeous. No sh chips, no cracks, no, just the carving of it all. I, um, it's not as heavy. It's a little bit lightweight. It reminds me of like a pier one piece. There's not a tag or any kind anything, but I just thought he is gorgeous. I love the neutral brown colors of him and he was $5. And at that same sale, I picked up this brass and it's got that beautiful aqua turquoise, whatever you want to call that color, patina paint. It's not really patina, it's more of it's a paint, but um, it's got that nice weight to it. It's very, very pretty. And another sale for $5. I don't know if I paid too much for this, but it's a salt and pepper that stack on top of each other. Oh, I thought I'd never seen. And then it's um, ceramic and then glazed. Creative Co. Creative Co. Um, I'm not sure who makes Creative Co, but I thought I like that. I know when I had those from the Dollar Tree that I'd pick up, yeah, I wish I had more to sell because they did sell. And at that same sale, I picked up these little farm fresh little shakers. I don't even think they've been used. So for a dollar for the pair, that's nice. And I, you know, I'm a sucker for pottery, but look at this guy. It's a little cowboy guy, um, I think, or horse. I'm not sure a cowboy guy. I got a cowboy hat on. And I don't know what's supposed to be here. Is this like a spoon rest? Um... You know, like, would you just, for your coffee, would you have all your spoons there? I don't know, but um, it does have, like, a stamp signature. It was 50 cents. So <laughs> I just thought, oh, somebody's going to like that quirkiness. It is so cute. That same sale, I picked up this turtle. And once I shine him up, oh, he's got that opaqueness, the opal opaqueness to him. He is a nice weight. There's no, it's not signed or anything. Um, but yeah, super cute. No chips, no cracks, no flea bites. Just a cute little glass turtle. It was a quarter. <laughs> it was a quarter. Um, and then I, you know, I am a sucker for stained glass. So here's a stained glass butterfly for 25 cents. That same opal looking, oh, just so pretty. You know, sun catcher. For another quarter, I got this other pink swirled paperweight. There again, it's not signed, but this is just a nice, people like pink and white, so nice paperweight, and I got some nice weight to it. At another sale, I ran across some horse race glasses. So this is the Belmont States and the Triple Crown and the Preak, Preakness, Preakness Race. Now, while a couple videos back, I shared with you that I found a Kentucky Derby, which are very collectible, which I did not know until I went to that huge auction where they had collections upon collections. And I saw how much the Kentucky Derby glasses or the racing glass, I'm not sure if they were all Kentucky Derby or if any of them were like this. So I grabbed these, these were three for a dollar. My Kentucky Derby glass that I picked up for less than a dollar ended up selling for $85 on the auction and eBay. So, well, wow, I was I was impressed. Now these don't sell as much. They go for about $10. I guess Kentucky Derby is more, um, but you know, I might as well picked them up and then looked. So I could sell this for a lot, maybe, you know, a lot, three, all three of them together and see how they sell. Kentucky Derby parties are really popular. I know people around this area, even though we live in Michigan, do the parties too with the hats. And um, at the last auction, we saw a guy that we know and he, he was buying the Kentucky Derby glasses because he has a huge party and the women wear the hats. And do you all do anything like that? I I mean, I, 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 you know, I, I can't say that I watch it if I remember that it's on, but um, yeah, give me a comment down below. Do you guys do anything for Kentucky Derby? Do you watch it? Are you from Kentucky? And I bet you that's a big thing there. Um, sale. I picked up this. Um, it is a wasp catcher, you know, a fly catcher. Um, I don't know. For some reason, she wanted to charge me $30 for it. And I'll insert, I have a, Afghan that I'll show you um and then she wanted $30 for that so I'll, I think what it was is she was an antique booth 
and then they said they were a state sale and they didn't have anything priced and I'm like huh? <laughs> I don't like, well, then I'm not buying it. I'm not here to do. That's the hard thing with garage sales is you're not here. You're going to garage sales to find a good deal. If you call it a state sale, I know the prices will be up some, but I'm like, I'm not here to go into an antique mall. So I walked away and she's like, well, how much would you give me for the two of them? And I'm like, I'll, I would do 20 for the two of them because the Afghan is beautiful. I'll insert um, because it was smelly <laughs> and then I always been in the, I, yeah, I, I'm a washer and it needed to be washed. So anyway, yes. Yeah, so she did end up selling, you know, we went from $60 to $20 anyway. Um, yeah. So there's that. Look at this. Oh my goodness. So she had a booth. And so what she was doing is she was still no longer at her booth, but she was trying to sell at call it a state sale so she actually said that somebody had made this for her um but then this has this piece of paper so you know it's a good it's a good story i don't know i don't know but yes here's the, the lady actually won some a contest of making this back in the early 80s so whether that whether this lady actually, I don't, it was, it was quite the, it was quite the story. Um, so she had, um, it was, she had a lot of her glassware and collectibles. So she had some blue mountain pottery and I've actually sold a cat. So there's, there was a dog, there was three dogs, three dogs. And then she did have the cat and I've sold these on eBay myself. So I was, oh, this one's, this one's got the tag on it. Also two, two of them have tags. And then two do not have tags. So yes, that Blue Mountain Pottery. Canadian, is Canadian. Yep, Canada. Can, Canada, thank you. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry guys, I misspeak all the time. I'm usually not an apple person, but I love pulled glass. I love handmade pieces. So this beautiful apple, and then this one, I'm gonna call a tomato. <laughs> because it's kind of squatty so yeah I'm gonna call this one a tomato so I just I absolutely and that pop of red in your kitchen or on a windowsill that just glistens is just a beautiful beautiful color and then that was a state sale that we went to Ohio for that everything was still in boxes they didn't she hardly had anything out she had a few things out in her house but most of that was sold and then she's like dig through the boxes and Alex is quite the picker so next thing you know we're digging through boxes <laughs> So I did pick up this frame there. Also, this I actually just sold to, to Cynthia, I think. Um, the I just sold the rounds that I had just got um, the floral pattern in. And so I recognized the frame. I'm sure, oh, it was quite a, there was lots of stuff in the boxes, but <laughs> I probably could have found the pieces and parts if I would have looked farther. But anyway, I was happy to find the frame because people still decorate with these frames. I've... I just sometimes leave them as is, or I do a little bit of patina on it. The gold um, seems to be doing really well, that rub and buff gold. So I might do a little bit of that patina on there just to brighten it up a little bit. And I, I did pick out two of the Bibles that I ran across in her stash. So a dot, or 25 cents. I have actually been looking for some old um, cards like this just to sit in some of my vignettes so that darn instagram it gets me in trouble every time it makes me start looking for stuff so and then i got some other i got a few other things to share with you i picked up this oh my goodness look at oh my gosh so i think this was something and then somebody added the farmer's market on it um, cause you can definitely tell that this has been aged and this has been like this for a while. So, um, yeah, I thought $5. So this garage sale, they had $5, $2, $4. $2. Their tables were set up that way. That was a wonderful way to do it. And then at the same, on the same table, wait for it. Look at this. And this is actually, I think this is older also just because of the weight of it. It does not look like a Hobby Lobby piece. It's got a little bit of brokenness. I will probably CA glue to that down just a little bit so it doesn't catch and rip anything along with this little piece. Just to make sure, I mean, I can't fix it. And you know, you could, anyway. I just glue it down enough that you don't see the glue and then glue it down 
um, so it doesn't break anymore. So I thought these two pieces were wonderful. And then I love the care. I love the care that the this was taken. This is actually a dried boxwood wreath. I'm not gonna take it all the way out until I'm ready to do something with it, but it's in beautiful condition. They brought it out in the garage sale like that. Um, yeah, you know, these dried, I love dried, but it's so fragile. And wouldn't that look beautiful in that large basket? But the problem is this is super heavy and I think it would pull on that. So for me to, yeah, I wouldn't want to, that's not as thick and heavy as what this is, but this would be beautiful on some pallet wood. I got at the same where I got the little salt and pepper shakers. It had a whole bunch of pine cones on it. I believe it was $2, so I love the barn wood look of this tray. Now it says it was a TJ Maxx piece, but I think just cleaning it up um, and seeing what's underneath all that dust, <laughs> we'll see how it cleans up. And then we stopped at another one, $2 for this beautiful cutting board, and it's the same thing like the other one. It's not been oiled, it's not been sealed, um, it's never been used, it still has stick or like, sticky left from tape in an original sticker so i don't have to sand it other than try to clean that off with some goo gone and give it a drink of oil maybe sand it smooth because it's it's still rough it's still very rough um so that i mean that does not take much at all to sand these smooth with 220 grit so here's the first furniture piece now i told myself i wasn't really going to do any reupholstering or new cushion because it's just not cost efficient right now but I do have a size I know that would fit this and it's got a beautiful, beautiful metal base to it. So I think that would be an easy transition with drop cloth. That shouldn't take me too awful much. Oh, so this is the item I got for Chris. Oh my goodness, yes, it is gorgeous. This is something that he's always kind of eyeballed. I know that the dealers at our antique mall are always looking for these to display. So I was happy to stumble across one of these for him in his workshop where he's gonna put it, I don't know. But I know once I show it, he's gonna make it look all pretty. Not that everything that you purchase has to be this huge transformation makeover. Sometimes it's just fixing an item. Somebody's just tired of it. They don't care about fixing it. They're just changing out their decor. So I am happy to pick this beautiful tobacco basket up and fix it with a little bit of the CA glue. So I always share these just in case somebody's like, well, how do you fix that? This is simple CA glue. Works in all types of products, just a little dab of glue, a little bit of the activator to dry. I'm trying not to show the glue through, so I'm trying to put it on both pieces of the reed. Hold it for 15 seconds after you sprayed the activator, and then there you go. It's good to go. And then when it comes to this one, just a little bit of the gold leaf rub and buff, I think will just absolutely accent all the details on this beautiful metal frame. And then for these cutting boards, yes, there's just some weird stick -em on there. I don't know if it was the gift wrap or that the person got a gift, but just trying to get the stick -em off. Uh, it wasn't really scraping off, so unfortunately I'm going to have to use a little bit of Goo Gone to get that sticky off. Now this one is just left at a raw state. The texture you just know that it'll stain very easily. There's something about sanding something smooth that lays those grains down and doesn't let it accept staining or whatever happening i just i guess i'm a textured person that i like that to be nice and smooth and then i'll go in where they cut the groove that would collect juice and water or whatnot and hand sand that because that is really raw if you went to wipe that off with a rag it would actually grab the fibers of the rag and you'd have little pieces of material in there for this cutting board, I'm going to have to switch out my 220 sandpaper 
for some 80 grit because I need to remove cut marks. And after doing all the sides, I will then go back to the 220 sandpaper to make sure that it's nice and smooth. To finish both of these off, I will be giving them a drink of the Howard's Cutting Boy Board Oil. And boy, were these ever thirsty. I put plenty on there, set them on a towel, and let it soak in overnight. I absolutely love the shape of these type of hooks and I was happy that there was a fourth even though nope it's not connected that's okay I know that we always have scrap wood laying around and that Chris could create something out of them With minimal prep to this piece of wood, meaning that he just had to cut it to size, a little bit of sanding to make it smooth, sealing it in with some polyacrylic, sanding that smooth so it doesn't have the rust texture with steel wool. And now he's just going to put some new holes in there to attach it to the wood, along with a hanging system so it's ready to hang. As I'm cleaning off my pieces, I realized that, oh, well, I don't get to leave this one as is. It has some damage onto the top of it that were underneath the original top coat that was put on here. So, yep, the fun of sanding off of this. Um, yeah, my, my rotary sander, my orbital sander is a little bit on the big side to get in there. But I'm going to get the general off with this first before having to hand sand it. Didn't mind sanding off that top, but I don't really want to try to sand off around those legs. So I made the decision that I'm just going to tape off that top and then I'm going to go ahead and paint that bottom up. Chris has put a new plug on this and we know that it works now it's worth my time redoing this piece so I'm really just trying to assess what's inside here I like the rusty stars I think the pip berries have seen a better day um, unfortunately they are attached to the candle and none of it really wants to come out <laughs> So sometimes an item just tells you how it's going to be done. I really probably would have spray painted this all black if I could have taken everything out, but it's not that strong of a metal. And the more I pulled out it, the more I was going to be making it wonky. So I'm just going to go ahead and use some rub and buff. Now the rub and buff on the shiny surface, I can't say is 
stain extremely well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the little detailed areas, the edges, that star, and then I'm going to take some natural wax and rub some of it off just to give it more of an aged look. And now I'm going to start by building it back up. I have these picks that were in my stash. I think Hobby Lobby sells them. I've had them forever, so great opportunity to use these up. So got the other pit berries out. I'm going to cut these apart, fill this back in, and put those four rusty stars back in. But I am going to add a little bit of hot glue so these stay in. So this wood bowl is just like that riser piece. <laughs> Unfortunately, we've got some staining going on. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the tag. Of course, glue gone is needed again. And I'm going to go ahead and get my sander back out. And we're going to take this down to whatever the wood is underneath it all. But for this piece, I'm going to actually seal it with some of the Verithane Natural Clear Wax. So I'm going to go in with my Annie Salone waxing brush, and this wood is just going to soak it all in. I love the oddity of the wood. I love the imperfections of it. It just is added character. So what I do is I will put the wax on the inside the bowl, on the outside of the bowl. I'll let that dry, you know, wax on, wax off any of the excess. And then an, an, I'll add another coat until I can't feel any texture. Then when it comes to the final coat, I will take a sanding sponge and wax that last coat in. That way it is good and sealed and it's a wonderful top coat. So let's get this one cleaned up and see what we have. It's as I'm getting it vacuumed off from all of the glitter and the pine cone le that were left behind. Now I noticed that, oh, it's got some gray going on, probably trying to age it to look like a barn wood, but it's g very raw in the texture. So we'll get it all cleaned up, get it sanded, and then I'll make my decision on what I think I want to do with it. I don't really like that inside of how those stripes are going, but we'll work on it as you go. Sometimes as you're cleaning it up, you're figuring it all out. So here's my plan. I have this other half a sheet of decoupage tissue paper from Rocycle. I thought, oh, won't that look nice now? I just recently used this on a couple stools, and I know that if I put this on the wood itself, that it won't be as white. So I'm going to go ahead and put a couple coats of white on the bottom of this so that white and black ticking pop but first I'm going to spend the time to tape off the sides because I just really want it to be on the bottom where I'm not really crazy about all that that's going on there. After two coats of the white you can still kind of see some of the other wood showing through at this at this moment it wasn't a concern of mine so what I'm doing now is I'm going to be gluing the tissue paper down with some polycrylic so I'm like okay well I'm just going to go ahead and put the polycrylic on and then remove the tape and then lay my tissue paper on the top of it <laughs> Okay, so then how did I get to this, right? Like, hold on, you just had the tissue paper on. So yeah, those spots were actually bleed through and it just looked like a hot mess. And so I'm like, 
oh, I just wasted my paper. Oh, so the next thing you know, I was scraping it all off and then I was going to get a new piece and redo it. But then I kind of liked just that chippy paint look. So I thought, well, I'll just take the rest of the paper off and sand it smooth, put some polycrylic on the whole thing and call it good. Sometimes, yep, it was something that happened that you couldn't predict that I needed to seal this box in first with shellac. Oh, you just, you never know, but yeah, nope, I like it as is now. Heck, I got so many wood pieces going on, I thought I would throw this in. Now, I had just picked this up for $11 at the weekly auction that we had been going to on Tuesday nights. Nobody else wanted it, I guess. $11. Now, I love the wood of it. I'm just not a fan of, I'm going to call that baby... Yeah. Anyway, I'm not a fan of that greenish yellow that is on there. So, I'm going to, of course, do the ginger chick of painting that black look at those side windows oh love this little display cabinet so this should be pretty easy of a fix so i'm just going to take some waverly ink chalk paint and i'm just going to brush it on the areas that are that color but when it comes to the inside i don't want the black to be on the inside i want to darken that up so a little bit of a waverly antique wax to tone that color down i think it'll give it more of a wood green look will be perfect so this is just a quick little fix but i had to share this cute little cabinet with you oh my goodness it is so cute if i had a spot for it and some littles to put in there it would be staying with me So I went into my frame stash to see if I had any size of frame that would fit that beautiful dried boxwood wreath. And I do. I think this was a garage sale find for $5. So we'll get it all cleaned up and Chris is going to cut up some pallet wood and attach it in the frame for me. Now that he has the pallet wood in there for me, I'm going to go ahead and use the Dollar Tree glue to make some chippy paint. So I'm just applying the glue on. Then I'm going to go ahead and take a brush, but in the middle, I'm like, oh, it's running onto my pallet wood. So I probably should have taped off of that area. So now I'm going to go ahead and reverse that and put some tape on there. And then now I will brush my paint out. And the more you let it dry in between, I notice the smaller the crack. So I'm just going to go ahead and wipe this right on right at the beginning, then apply my paint right over, not really letting it dry too much in between. blend in this palette wood just a wee bit so it just doesn't in your face stick out so all I'm gonna do is do a dry brush where there's minimum paint on my paintbrush and what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to let it hit all those grooves all the texture that's on the palette wood and then after the paint is dry I'm gonna give my frame just a little bit more of a distressed look by sanding there's some raised areas those little corners i want to make sure that this is going to look like it has kind of aged with time to go along with those crackles we're putting the hook on for the wreath we're going to go ahead and add the hanging system on the back now this is super heavy it's a large large frame and a lot of heavy pallet wood once you have it all together so we definitely want to make sure that we have appropriate wire and hanging system on the back of this
my last project of the day is redoing this little bench. Yep, I'm going to get rid of all that fabric, that batting, give the metal a little bit more updated color. So let's get started. Yep, that would be an electric knife I'm using to cut my upholstery of foam. So, and then I'm going to flip my board over to the good side to be on the bottom and all where I took all the staples out to be where the two cushions are going to be put together. The, the cushion is going to be glued down. So I have some spray adhesive. I'm going to go ahead and spray it on that board, put my new push piece of cushion down. I'll link everything I use down below. I absolutely love this thick cushion that does not compact from Amazon. Oh, it's it's nice cushion. So yeah, I'm just going to do some spray adhesive to connect the two so that when I'm upholstering it, it doesn't slip and slide all around. Next, I'm going to be attaching my layer of batting. So I'm just, this is actually, I'm working on a thrifted roll. I don't even know, some quilter must have got rid of their roll of batting and I was happy to thrift it. So yep, I can link some down below, but yeah, if you ever see this in the thrift store, pick it up. So I'm just going to guesstimate on what size I need. Yep, <laughs> way too large and then cut it off to the appropriate and then use my electric staple gun or my battery operated staple gun actually from Ryobi to staple it on the back. For my outside fabric, I would be used pre-washed, non-softened drop cloth that I get from Amazon. I'll link that down below also. <laughs> and I'm it's gonna look like I'm cutting it really large, but this the leftover pieces of drop cloth are what we use for our waxes and many uses in the usage in the shop. So yeah, it may look like I'm wasting some, but I have a plan that I need some more in our bin at our work in our workshop. After I get it cut to the sides, I go through the four corners and I cut out a square. So I make sure that the bottom cut covers up to the bottom of the cushion, but this way you don't have a bunch up of fabric at your, at your corners. So now I'm just going to tuck my ends under. So drop cloth likes to fray. So I don't ever feel a need to iron it by the time I have pulled this nice and tight on this cushion. It, any of the wrinkles will come out and if you worked with drop cloth before you know that it, it just re-wrinkles until you do something like this with it so yep same thing just stapling it right on i have done a lot of these cushions on our channel so feel free to look at any of our upholstery foam or benches or any of our thrift flips if you want to see more bench makeovers <music>
So I was happy to stumble across this because I knew it was the perfect size for this JRB stencil that I get from the Vintage B Design. So first I'm just going to go ahead and measure off where it will be in the center and then use some two inch masking tape to tape off that area. So once I get it with some spray adhesive on the back, I know exactly where I can set it down at. The paint that I've always used when it goes to stenciling on fabric, especially drop cloth, is just the Apple Barrel Multi-Use. So I'm just going to use a JRV stencil brush, very dry technique. A little bit will go a long way, offsetting it so that I'm not putting that directly onto the open area of the stencil first. A little bit on the plastic and working my way into so that you don't want it to be completely covered. You want it to look like it has been worn with time. Since I know my measurements on my tape are good i'm going to go ahead and work with that putting one more piece of tape on the outer edge i just want two small stripes so just laying the two inch tape on that one side and then i'm going to go back in with a regular size of masking tape and kind of off center it so i'll just be doing one stripe at a time but using what i already had as a guide for my for my measurements to be level I just have a couple more steps to fill, finish this up and I'm taking a piece of parchment paper and this cute little iron that I thrifted. Actually, it's not very hot, but mm, it was cute at the thrift store so I couldn't help myself. So what I need now I'm doing is that paint is crusty and you can feel it, but the Apple Barrel Multi-Use, once I heat set it in, will be nice and soft. So 30 second press or you can feel when you need to heat it up a little bit more to make it one with that fabric and then to finish this off I always seal my pieces in especially my drop cloth that somebody's going to be sitting on with some scotch guard and scotch guard is very stinky so I prefer to spray this outside but I give it a good coating So thank you so much for watching today's video and yes, please pop over, hop over to Alex's channel. I'll link it down below. Uh, super excited that he's finally going solo, testing it out. Yep, he is getting ready to move, but he's got a couple weeks because the house that they're moving into, um, him and his friends are moving into, is being renovated. So we all know renovations never happen on time. So he actually had a couple extra weeks and I said, you know, this is the time, you know, you're making, I love showing all your stuff on my hauls, but I know it makes my videos really long. So I thought, okay, let's, let's see how he does with this. This is the, give, give him that little push, right? Moms and dads, give him that little push to get going on something. So yeah, pop over there, help him out with a channel name. He is, he is the most easiest going kid. He is open to suggestions. So Thanks again for watching today's video, guys. And as always, if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. Don't forget to give me a comment down below of what item I found was your favorite and what item I made over was your favorite. So thanks again for watching. And if you're new and you're checking out our channel for the first time and you liked what you saw, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know we've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what we're up to. Bye.